Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, 1st of June 2011. Today we're having a midnight eclipse of the Sun. No, there's no need to check your calendar. This is not another one of my April 1st spoof videos. This is actually true. And there's going to be a total eclipse from the Sun seen mainly from the Arctic regions. So somewhere in the Arctic Circle in Siberia, the eclipse will occur at midnight. But the Sun is still above the horizon at this time of year. Hence, a midnight eclipse. Here is the latest image from the X-ray imager on GOES-15. Now you can see the moon just peeking into the bottom right hand corner. I managed to do a screen capture of a more recent raw image which shows the eclipse at its maximum phase. Sorry about the quality of the data. Since we talked yesterday there's only been one sea flare so let's take a look at the active regions and see what's been going on. Region 1224 seems to be decaying as it approaches the northwest limb but it'll be gone by tomorrow anyway. Region 1225, needless to say, remains a single large spot. Region 1229 has shown little development, as has 1228. But neither of the regions that have been following behind this group have been numbered as yet. Yeah, and we have yet more sunspots coming over the northeast limb. One of them is very large. It's probably that large region I've been talking about for the last few days. Region 1226 has shown some interesting developments. And the sunspot group 1227 was the region that produced the sea flare that I talked about just a few minutes ago. Now perhaps you can see the dilemma of those trying to use sunspot numbers to measure solar activity. We have three or four regions that are not numbered or, and included in the sunspot count, so the sunspot number could be out by 50%, which does not make it a very reliable measure of solar activity. Further, the sunspot number is increasing, yet activity is dropping. So even if the number was right, it wouldn't be a very good indicator. Now let's take a look at the development of these regions over the last 48 hours. Noted both the white light and the magnetic movies that there are no major regions emerging or developing very quickly. Again, this explains why there is not a great deal of activity. However, regions 1226 and 1227 have been changing, and I have a short video to illustrate that. Keep an eye on the leading spot in region 1226. It starts off as a single large penumbra, within which there are many umbra, but over the time of the video, the spot splits in two. What is happening here is that the differential rotation of the Sun, the fact that the equator rotates faster than the pole, is beginning to rip these regions apart. This is the normal decay process for such active regions. As you will see in the magnetic movies, these regions become more diffuse and uh, more extended as time goes by. That's the same process. Now let's take a look at the transition region movie and see what eruptions there have been on the Sun. We can see initially that another part of the snake lifts off and I'd be very surprised if the rest of it didn't at some time in the next few days. However, the most interesting eruption is in the southeast, and here's a more detailed movie of that. Exquisite, isn't it? Now let's see if there have been any coronal mass ejections associated with these. Unfortunately, the SOHO data is running about 10 hours behind, so I have no indication of the coronal mass ejection in the southeast. However, looking at the C2 and C3 movies, you can see lots of coronal mass ejections going on, particularly in the northeast. Well, has all this solar activity had a major effect in geospace? We turn to the ACE data to check that. We can see from the temperature density and velocity of the solar wind that the conditions in geospace are being controlled by the solar wind itself rather than coronal mass ejections. From NOAA 15, we see that the auroral zone is fairly quiet and the KP index has been varying between 1 and 3. So in summary then, I've hardly had to change the parameters from yesterday. The sunspot number remains at just above 100, but I think that's a fairly large underestimate. The X-ray background has remained at B4. Radio sun flux is just over 110 solar flux units. The solar wind speed varies around about 560 kilometers per second with a density of 2 protons per cubic centimeter. And the KP index is still rated as quiet. I've downgraded my forecast for the next 24 hours. C flares are now possible with a very low probability of getting M or X flares. Sunspot number will remain high. Coronal mass ejections will remain likely. But the chances of getting a geomagnetic storm are low. As far as the longer term forecast is concerned, we're only expecting a relatively small region to return in the southeast and I don't expect very much from that. If you want more details about what's going on on the sun, check out some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see some earlier editions of the sun today, or some of my videos on global warming, go to my channel, as they are all listed there. Yesterday the Space Shuttle Endeavour landed for the last time, 
I'm sort of sad really that the space shuttle program is coming to an end as at one time I was one of the finalists to become a payload specialist on board. However, we do need to modernize our access to space and find a more cost-effective way of getting there. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention yesterday that the world was coming to an end. So if you're watching this video, it didn't happen. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.